There's an old spruce hollow in the vast northern forest. It's an enchanting cathedral of towering trees, small openings, and fascinating creatures. See this treasure through the eyes of extraordinary vocalists, a pair of barred owls. At the end of a long winter, the pair flies to the hollow over the boreal forest mix of aspen and birch, tall spruce and boggy openings, straight to an ancient snag hidden in this special place. They come from another part of their territory to nest here each year. No other owl has such a wide inventory of creative sounds. The male goes from post to post around its territory. Wings drooping and feathers puffed out, the owl tries to look and sound as imposing as it can. Such loud, aggressive behavior can irritate others. Not all territorial encounters are between the same species. Often, the purpose of a confrontation is dominance, not exclusion. There's another drummer present. This one struts in quiet, subtle colors along one of the mossy logs on the old growth floor. Like the pileated woodpecker, the rough grouse cock drums throughout the spring to indicate his territory. Barred owl eggs are often laid when snow is still present. Incubation starts with the first egg to keep it from freezing, since the eggs cannot be laid all at once. They'll hatch in the order that they were laid. A sudden new and ominous sound. The great horned owl, fiend of the night, has plucked a luckless coot off the newly opened lake and stopped by the snag. Lucky for the barred owls, though, it could have been one of them. Great horned owls have begun to move into the area as the forest has been opened by logging. So far, the barred owls have been able to avoid being killed by these larger predators. Whether they can continue to do so depends upon how much forest is logged.
And there are some other new arrivals to the haunt of the barred owl. Two downy owlets have just reached their first week of age. The female has spent weeks in confinement. Though her eyesight is curtailed by the snag, she doesn't miss the wondrous spring activities. Although barred owls are chiefly nocturnal, they're now forced to hunt both night and day to feed the young. The owlets already have a good coat of down, but they'll still need brooding until their fourth week. Their bills appear enormous, without adult facial feathers to hide the base. Outside, both parents are hunting for a wide range of prey. Birds, flying squirrels, and even fish. Today, a deer mouse. One of the staples of the barred owl's diet exposes itself. Mice and voles can make up as much as 90% of the barred owl's food items. Red foxes have chosen to den in the old growth habitat. The adults hunt throughout the habitat edges of the forest mosaic. But it is here, deep within the shelter of the big trees, that they raise their pups. As for the barred owlets, they're now about a month old. Both have matured enough that their mother no longer needs to go down into the snag to feed them. Both parents simply drop the food down the hatch and watch it disappear. So the young ones are almost on their own as they learn to preen themselves, endure the mosquitoes, and investigate their home in their own owlish way. The full complement of the symphony's woodwind section has arrived. All live in special places and sing the unique melody of their species. As the symphony is made of related but different parts, so the plants and animals are interdependent yet specialized for particular niches. Some are hard to see up in the old growth spruce tops, but they come down to a secret puddle in the morning to drink and to bathe. Here, the elusive bay-breasted warbler may be seen, along with the common yellow rump warbler and the dark-eyed junco.
where a multitude of birds live, there must also live elusive accipiter hawks, bird hunters of the forest. Fierce, aggressive, their presence brings instant terror to their prey, with good reason, for they ambush a careless bird at the blink of an eye. In the clutch of the accipiter, the blue jay makes a valiant but hopeless struggle. With a nest of five ravenous chicks, the parents will soon be hunting again. Something else is up in the spruce tops. The owlets have vacated the ancient snag. Having spent their entire lives inside its stable cavity, they find a number of challenges in their new environment. Since they're not able to fly upward yet, there's an interesting problem to solve when they run out of room to fly down. How do they get back up again? Armed with razor sharp talons and beak, the young owls soon figure out how to make the ascent. As spring advances towards summer, many young animals are discovering new dimensions in their lives. The position of the pileated woodpecker nest, once a secret, is now trumpeted throughout the hollow by the insatiable chicks. The owlets are up and at it again. Already they're much more at home in the treetops. In a few days, they'll fly with their parents to another part of the territory. In this way, the mice at this location should be able to replenish in time for the parents' return next spring. In the weeks since hatching, the owlets have already consumed hundreds of mice, voles, and other small creatures. The family will remain together as the parents continue to feed and train their young. Then, some months later, the owlets will disperse. The last few days of spring go by quickly, as the old growth stand puts out more and more of its warm weather finery. But even before the first day of summer arrives, the haunt of the barred owl sees the last of these black eyes.
Hopefully, logging and development will allow this treasure that has endured for so many years to continue its symphony so the barred owls may return next spring to their ancient snag. <laughs>